Hi everybody and welcome to our grooming channel. My name is Melanie Newman and in today's grooming session we are going to learn more about dog grooming scissors. So I'm going to take you through the different edges as well as the different handles and also how to use a pair of grooming scissors. So how to fit them correctly in your hand. The first edge we are going to have a look at is called a beveled edge. A beveled edge is cut on an angle towards a blade's edge. The cutting edge is clearly defined. A beveled edge would most likely be serrated because this actually stops the coat from being pushed through the scissor and the serrated edge helps grip and hold the coat into place as the scissor cuts. Serration looks like fine lines or little grooves and they run across the bottom of the blade and you might have to get up pretty close to have a look. A beveled edge scissor with serration is a really great beginner scissor. A convex edge is the sharpest edge. It gives you a smoother cut with more precision. The blades are milled to a fine point and the cutting action is very, very smooth. Grooming scissors come in straights or curves. So here we have a pair of straights and they are a convex edge and we have a pair of curves which are a beveled edge with serration. And these curves have a convex edge. So how I can also tell the difference is when I open and close my scissors, there is hardly any sound. Whereas I open my beveled edge with the serrated edge and you can actually hear them. So the sound's not smooth. Let's look at the different handles. Here we have an offset handle, a crane handle, and then a level handle. The offset handle, the top blade, as it's coming down, is slightly offset. When we look at the crane handle, the top blade comes straight across and is not offset. It actually just follows straight through. And then when we look at the level, our rings are level, so there's no offset. They are completely level. The crane and the offset have the best ergonomics when it comes to using them every single day. So you might find that using a level scissor or some people call them a flipper, it might actually make your hand work harder. So especially with the crane, your hand doesn't have to work as hard. Okay, so we've learned a little bit about the different blade edges and we've learned about the different handles. So let's learn how to hold your scissors. We are going to begin by finding the balancing point of the scissor so that usually is where our adjustment little turn is on our scissor so that's our tension turn that makes our scissors looser or tighter so i'm going to point my hand straight and then usually where that little adjustment turn is that is where our balance is on our scissor so when we find that, our scissor will just balance on our hand and this will give us the control that we need. So what we need to do is, is then turn the scissor on its correct side, so pointing upwards. And then this will be where our scissor is going to sit. And it's going to sit on the inside of that index finger. If you don't feel comfortable with finding the balance of the scissor, what you can do is, is just pop the scissor. So have your palm flat, pop that on that knuckle, on that index finger, on the inside. So it's matching up. My knuckle is near where the adjustment screw is. 
Once we're comfortable where our scissor is sitting on that knuckle, we're then going to pop our ring finger through the bottom ring finger rest and then our pinky is going to sit on our little finger rest at the back of the scissor. And this will help you give you strength for when you're scissoring. So it's really important that we have that little pinky finger rest at the back of the scissor. Place your fingers around the bottom shank area or the bottom blade. So wrap them around and this will help keep your scissors nice and steady for when you're, when you're scissoring. Place your thumb through the top ring insert or the thumb insert and try not to let your thumb go all the way through. So I know it can be hard, but try and push the scissor with your thumb instead of popping it right through. So just, I like to just put my thumb at the bottom of the, the thumb insert. So just resting it and then you can then just try and open and close. If your thumb keeps going through that scissor, then just readjust yourself and then start again. You can practice by placing your hand on a flat surface and open and close your scissors so you begin to feel the correct cutting motion. Now, how do we know if the scissor is fitted for our hand? So whether we know if the scissor is too small or just too big for our hand size. How I like to check is if I can open my scissor the whole way without my thumb overstretching. So my thumb isn't overstretching and my hand isn't overworking. So these scissors are perfect for my hand. If I can only open the scissor to this point and my thumb is really overstretched and it's only the scissor is only opening that far, I know the scissor is way too big for my hand and it usually means that the shank, so this part of the scissor is, is quite long so it might suit somebody that has a larger hand than me. But with these scissors, I can open them perfect. So what that means is, is when I'm scissoring a dog, I'm covering more surface of the dog instead of just opening my scissors this far. And these are an eight inch scissor. So these are quite a decent size scissor. So when I scissor, it means I can cover a lot more of that dog. With a level set handle, I feel like my hand has to work extra hard because I like the ergonomics of an offset or a crane handle because I feel like my thumb can move with the scissor. Whereas with a level handle, when I open it, my thumb really has to work really hard to open. So I can only use these for a short time. It's not a long term. I cannot scissor a whole dog with a level set handle because I know my thumb is going to get really tired really, really fast. When I'm using my scissors, if I'm scissoring dogs' faces or their feet or scissoring more precision type areas, I will only use the tip of my scissor or towards the last third of my scissor. If I'm scissoring the body or down the leg of a dog, I'm definitely going to utilize this whole blade. Always watching the tip. So your eye is always on the tip of the scissor, even if you are scissoring those larger areas. So bodies and legs, always watching that tip. I hope this grooming session has helped you guys out a lot. If you guys have any questions, pop them in the comments below. 
I love scissoring my own poodles and my bichons. It's one of my favorite things to do on my downtime. So please, if you have any questions, pop them in the comments below. And that includes where to buy really good equipment from. So, so your scissors and your dryers and all that type of fun stuff. So um, until next time, happy grooming.